Hello, true crimers. It is time for another true crime in a short amount of time. This is the case of Tom Bragg. Viewer discretion is advised. No, with the accent, no. Tom Bragg was born in 1956, and he actually has a twin brother. Shortly after he graduated from high school, Tom would uh, get a job as a long-haul trucker, something he just loved to do. He would actually go on to get married. The two of them ended up having two kids together, but then unfortunately their marriage would end in a divorce some years later. Sometime in the early 90s or so, Tom would move to Thomaston, Georgia. And then by the mid-90s, he dated a woman named Mary Ann. Mary Ann had also been a recent divorcee, and she had three kids of her own from her previous marriage. Mary and Tom, they hit it off. They got along really well, um, and very quickly, uh, the two of them got married. Tom uh, realized that uh, as being a long-haul trucker, he wasn't going to be home a lot to be with his new bride. Um, so at some point in, I think, early 2000, 2001 or so, uh, he would end up leaving that job and he became a, uh, he worked in construction, specifically as a roofer uh, there in Thomaston. That way he could be home with family. In mid-2002, Tom and his twin brother, Tim, uh, were doing roofing work at a local church there in Thomaston when suddenly the roof collapsed. Both men fell and both men ended up breaking their legs and their ankles, so they were out of commission for some time. Tim would end up moving into the house with Tom where uh, Mary Ann took care of both of them. She basically served as their nurse. A month or two after the accident, both men had started to recover. Tim had been a little bit farther along in his recovery, so he was able to then move out of the house and back into his own place. Tom, however, was still in a cast, uh, still used crutches, but he was getting to a point where he was really close, where he was going to be able to get back to work. Something he was really excited about because he doesn't like being kind of just, you know, holed up in the house. He wants to be out doing things. He wants to be out earning money to support him and his wife and his family. On the morning of September 9th, 2002, uh, a neighbor of Tom and Marianne would knock on Tom's front door. The neighbor, I guess, was supposed to be taking Tom into town for something, uh, but when Tom didn't answer the door um, and Marianne wasn't home, uh, the neighbor opened the door and walked inside. He walked down the hallway and he turned a corner, opened up um, a, a bedroom door, and it was then he discovered a very bloody scene. In the bedroom, Tom was lying face up in bed. He had a pillow over his face. He was literally like tucked into bed, like the sheets were tucked in. Um, and there was blood and brain matter all over the wall behind him all over the bed, on the ground, um, Tom had been murdered. Uh, he had been, what police would later say and the coroner would say, is he had been bludgeoned at least four times, possibly up to six times, uh, with some sort of hammer, claw hammer, something along those lines. But when police arrived, there was no murder weapon. Um, and really, the house itself was not in any disarray. There was no forced entry. There was nothing stolen. The only thing really outside of the bedroom that could serve as evidence was there were blood drops uh, going down the hallway and out towards one of the doors. So it's believed that whoever did this took the hammer, but like, you know, as they were carrying it, it was just dripping along the, the ground. A couple of hours later after the uh, body was discovered, Mary Ann would come home and that's when police would inform her that unfortunately her husband had been murdered. Uh, she broke down, she collapsed to the ground. And who would do this? Tom Bragg was 
a good guy. Uh, he was well loved. Tom didn't have any actual enemies, but it is clear to police that he was, this was the intent. Whoever did this went in there specifically to kill him um, and then flee. Obviously, they would interview uh, his wife first and foremost because it's usually the spouse who's guilty. Um, but she had been at a uh, an appointment that morning, um, a uh, psychologist or psychiatrist appointment, uh, and her friend drove her to that appointment and the friend testified and gave a statement that, yep, I in fact was with her. Several months down the road, uh, police are still investigating this. They don't really have a whole lot of tips or leads or anything. But they then uncover something kind of concerning. The marriage between Tom and Marianne was not great. Marianne, she had been sleeping around with not one, not two, but a few different men. Uh, they also found out that Marianne would go on the home computer and she would enter chat rooms and start interacting with men. Um, sometimes conversations would turn sexual in nature. Uh, so she was not faithful uh, whatsoever. Tom was faithful. She wasn't. The coroner would determine that Tom was likely killed sometime between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. Uh, on the morning that his body was found. So when they find out this information about Marianne being unfaithful, they then kind of look farther into her and her alibi. Well, she couldn't exactly say where she was between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m., but her she was observed leaving the house at about 6 a.m., and that's when her friend picked her up. So now there's this window of time where, well, maybe she could have done it um, because she can't say that she wasn't near him uh, when he was killed now. They would also find out that the, that appointment she went to, that psychiatry appointment, well, they were able to obtain warrants and they were able to get the notes from the psychiatrist uh, of that appointment that morning. And Mary Ann had said in that appointment, the morning that Tom was killed, she told the psychiatrist, I am just in such a state of shock. I am, I am so frazzled. My husband was just killed. And, you know, and she was just completely out of sorts. The problem is when she said that to the psychiatrist, she had not been informed that Tom was even dead yet because she didn't find out until after she left the appointment and got home. Um, so how would she have known? So police go back to the friend uh, that drove her and the friend said, well, Mary had given me some kind of drugs or pills or something, and I was just completely out of sorts uh, that morning. But she goes, the friend says, I do remember that at one point we we stopped at a bridge. Mary got out of the car, um, and she had something wrapped in something, and she threw that item over the bridge. Then she had a, uh, a bag of stuff that we stopped at another place. She had me stop somewhere else. And then she got out of the car and she threw the bag into some body of water. Those items have never been found. But it is believed that in the, the thing that was thrown over the bridge was probably the murder weapon. And the bag she threw into the water was likely the clothing she was wearing when she allegedly struck and killed her husband. Because when she was first uh, questioned the day, the morning of the murder, uh, police did uh, examine her clothes. They took her clothes. They examined it. There was no blood, nothing on it. So she had obviously changed her clothing. But what was the real motive? Well, I mean, she was a little annoyed that she had to basically play the role of nurse uh, to him. She was tired of it. And, um, well, there's got to be one other motive. I'm going to give you 900 guesses as to what ultimately the motive was. You'll probably only need one guess though. Did you guess? Yeah, life insurance policy. Shortly before Tom's death, Marianne, unbeknownst to Tom, and I still don't know how this is even actually possible to do, but it is, uh, she took out a $25,000 life insurance policy on her husband, Tom. They also interviewed uh, people, and uh, one of someone close to Marianne said that Marianne said, quote, I'm supposed to be the one being taken care of because I'm the woman. I'm not supposed to be a nursemaid to some cripple who can't even work. 
Then another person would say that Marianne had recently bragged that she had killed her husband. So Marianne was now arrested and then she was charged with the murder of her husband. And in September of 2006, Marianne was found guilty of his murder and she was sentenced to life in prison without parole. I thought the person, if you're taking a life insurance policy out on someone, I thought they had to know you were doing that. Don't they, don't they pass some sort of like medical tests or something? I could be wrong. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. I, I didn't know you could just take out an insurance policy like that without the person knowing. Because I feel uh, that's a problem. <laughs> because, well, murders happen a lot because of these things. So in $25,000, that's all she would have gotten. That's, that's what... Tom's life cost. But that is it for this case, folks. Um, so I will be back with another long form true crime story tomorrow, which is Wednesday, if you are watching this in the present. If you're watching it in the future, hi, am I dead? Are you watching this? And am, I, am I alive still? I hope so. But it could also be 120 years in the future and i am been a ghost for 100 years. Who knows? Uh, please give this channel a subscribe if you're into true crime. Um, give the video a like hit the bell, all that jazz. Uh, also follow me on Twitter and Facebook, which are listed below. Uh, you can join my Discord server, which is also in my link tree in the description below. Um, please be over the age of 18 if you are going to join it though, otherwise you will be given the boot. All right, so until next time, true crime Maroonies, we will see ya. Well, you'll see me for the next video. I won't see you for the next video because I can't see you when I'm doing this. I'm just in a room talking to my phone and it's so weird, right? Like, I'm just, I'm talking to myself right now. Uh, where am I going with this? I don't even, what?